Uh, going up a bit higher, we have visible light. The closest sort of visible light to infrared light is red. And as we get to higher and higher energies, we go through yellow, green, blue, and eventually get to violet. So we're pretty familiar with it, right? Colors of the rainbow, colors that we can see. Pretty straightforward. Now this sort of light is emitted by TV screens, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to see it. It's emitted by light bulbs, because they're glowing white hot. And it's emitted by the sun, which is why it's visible. Uh, we can detect it with photographic film in a camera like this one, or perhaps a camera that's a bit more modern. And we can, of course, also detect it with our eyes, which are great little organic detectors of electromagnetic waves. So after we get from red all the way up to violet, and we get to higher energy electromagnetic waves, we're no longer in the visible spectrum, and we're past violet, so we're in the ultraviolet light part of the spectrum. Now ultraviolet light is quite helpful for us because if it lands in our skin, then it will help produce vitamin D, which is an important part of how the body works. Without vitamin D, we can get quite sick. UV light has more energy than visible light. And that means that if we're exposed to it for too long, at the beach for example, then it can cause burns or skin cancer. And that of course is why it's easier to get sunburned outside than it is to get sunburned inside. It turns out that using something like sunscreen makes you completely opaque to ultraviolet light. If ultraviolet light tries to shine through sunscreen, it gets absorbed by the sunscreen without passing through. So sunscreen is able to block quite effectively ultraviolet light. As we can see from this picture, ultraviolet light can have another effect. It can cause some materials to fluoresce, which is the fancy name for glow. There are some materials that if we shine ultraviolet light on them, they will start emitting visible light. And so if we get a black light, for example, which is a way of emitting lots of ultraviolet light, then we can cause certain sorts of paints to glow. Ultraviolet light can also kill germs because as I mentioned, it has very high energy. So we can use it to sterilize food, for example. Name a use for each of the following electromagnetic waves, starting with radio waves. What can we use these for? Well, the radio in their title sort of gives it away, right? We can use them for communication. When we listen to a radio, we're listening to the sound decoded from radio waves that have been transmitted to that radio. B, infrared light. What's this used for? Well, one useful use of infrared light is, for example, a remote control, which will send out pulses of infrared light to a receiver, and the receiver will, once receiving those pulses, decode them and do something useful. For example, go on to the next part of the slideshow. Ultraviolet light, what is this good for? Well, we know that it can be harmful, right? It causes sunburn or skin cancer, but what can we use it for, for good? Well, one use for it might be to make something glow or fluoresce, or we could use it to kill germs and sterilize, for example, food that we intend to put at the supermarket. Finally, what about x-rays? Well, x-rays, as we all know, are useful in medical purposes. We can use x-rays for imaging bones. X-ray imagery is a way of looking through the soft tissue in order to see the hard tissue beneath it. 